welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Motivation, it drives us as human beings. It exists for a multitude of reasons. But what is it that motivates these men? Does it come from their franchise's troubled past? The 49ers have won it, beating the Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl. And it is no good. He missed it to the right. Or does it come from within? And one of the biggest heartbreaks you'll ever see. Ever. What about motivation for their fellow brother? What about for each other? He's got an alley down the right side. What a tribute to DeMar. The motivation for one singular goal. A leaping catch. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Can stem from many experiences. This crowd is going crazy. And every experience leads up to this exact moment. To the end zone. Oh, it's Gabe Davis. To bring you one step closer to your goal. Bam, bam, bam. Can't catch me. One week seasons from here on out. That's it, man. Go one and oh. Welcome to the AFC Divisional. Well, Justin Haley Ting is up to get us started here. Could not be more prime. So we even have for this divisional playoff presented by Intuit TurboTax, a snow-covered field and a sky shrouded in snow. We are ready to go, and before we kick it off, let's send it down to Jay Feely. Well, Jim, about 2 o'clock, somebody shook that snow globe and started snowing. It should snow throughout the game. I think the footing's good with the field turf so far. No wind down here, so it shouldn't impact these high-powered offenses. And in a game as evenly matched as this, it could come down to special teams. We know about Hines, his two kickoff returns against New England. But the real concern for Cincinnati is a rookie long snapper, a rookie punter and holder, and a second-year kicker who's been shaky at times this year. And, Jim, we know in a game like this, one big play, one big mistake in special teams, that could be the difference. Sounds like, Jay, thanks for coming down to a field goal in the end. And I wouldn't be surprised as the Bills won the toss, and they're going to kick it. They defer here at the top. If you wanted football weather, you want something that looks like a playoff game, Jim, <laughs> this right is there. it right here. <laughs> it's just one of those moments that you knew was just going to happen. These two teams were going to meet, and there's Mr. Cool. Joe Cool right there. Joe Burrow almost impervious to pressure, and you've seen what he's done. It's almost one of those things, Jim, that you just don't expect young guys to be able to handle all this, right, that early. Four playoff wins more than anybody else in the Bengals' history. This is so early in his career, it's really impressive. Both of these quarterbacks today, age 26. As all eight quarterbacks that took teams to the divisional round were under 30. It's only the second time it's ever been that way. Of course, both home teams were victorious on Saturday. Broke the trend last year when all four road teams won on divisional weekend. And away we go. Bass with the kick. Williams takes the grab over the shoulder at the goal line and flies up ahead where he's tripped up by Cam Lewis at the 20 yard line and here he comes you mentioned it Tony already holds the Cincinnati record for most playoff wins as a quarterback four and one Boomer had three wins Ken Anderson had a couple of wins of course this is uh, something new for this franchise having postseason wins in consecutive seasons and today they're trying to advance to the championship game for the second straight year. From the gun to start. Able to get it away quickly. That's what they've been doing all season long. And the catch is by Jamar Chase for six yards. Tony, what about this way that they approach the offense now with this instead of the downfield look we saw much more last year? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was last year they had to get the ball out of Burrow's hands. It took a lot of sacks because they didn't have the offensive line. This whole year, the offensive line was together for 15 games, like Tracy said, and that really helped them with communication and getting to a lot of different stuff. But now he's got to go back to last year, throw a quick game on first and second down, get it into these playmakers' hands quickly. He's got second and four. He's going to give it to Mixon, and Mixon is able to make his way on the slippery field for four. Hayden Hurst. 
helped with a block in all that traffic, and it's a first down. There's Leslie Frazier. I think Leslie Frazier should, <laughs> right now, a lot of teams are missing out. He deserves head coaching opportunities. This scheme, it's not random that when all these guys get hurt, Von Miller, Micah Hyde, it was White before, who's back, obviously, the corner position. This system has developed into the most dynamic system in the National Football League. Third snap, and a first down as Burrow steps up and throws it complete to Tyler Boyd. And just like that, Cincinnati finds its side on the other side of the 50. 22 this, yards. It's a great design play. You're going to motion and overload one side, but the weapons that Cincinnati has, both these teams have a plethora of weapons on the outside, but early in the game, no one is better than the Cincinnati Bengals. They always have great design. Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan, always getting too off to a good start. Here they toss it to Mixon. It gets a running start. A good yardage for 10. Another 10. Poyer had to hold him to that gain of 10. Asi Asi, the backup tight end with a good block here. And you can see the intent to run the football wasn't something that's been huge recently for either of these teams because the quarterbacks are so dynamic and all the weapons on the outside. But all of a sudden you get three offensive linemen hurt. Yeah. You're going to want to run the football. Weather gets worse, cold, whatever it is, run the football. And this it's a huge sign for Cincinnati right here. Brought in extra tight ends, and they both were pivotal on that play. Wilcox and Asi Asi. First down again. This time from the 35. Empty formation. These guys are going to pop out right here on the inside. Burrow's pass to his tight end, Hurst. And that's another first down play for eight. They're working right down the field, much like they did on the one opening drive they had against the Bills 20 days ago. Yes, like this. it's exactly right. Now, the Bills tried to pressure in that situation, which they don't normally do. So today, you kind of figured if you're Cincinnati, they're going to kind of Stay in their shell defense, see what you're going to do. But Cincinnati, they always get off to a good drive. They're as good as anyone in the National Football League. Buffalo usually gets better and better as the game goes on defensively. P. Ryan has come in at running back. Second and three. Burrow facing pressure. Goes over the top, wide open is Chase, and he splits the defenders for the touchdown. What a start, six plays, 79 yards, with 28 yards to chase for the touchdown. Go ahead and pause that right there. At this point, you're looking in the backfield, and that's where Chase is gonna sneak up. When the quarterback moves, it's a great job by Chase in the zone coverage to turn and go find a soft spot. And that is why this team is so hard. It's not just guarding them right away, but it's after the fact, second plastering, stay with them. McPherson with the extra point, low snap. It's fielded just fine by Chrisman. They had six plays, four of them went for first downs. They love playing on the road. And Chase had a touchdown against Baltimore last week. He's got one on the opening series against Buffalo. We welcome you back to Highmark Stadium here in Orchard Park. And Joe Burrow, four for four, 65 yards and a touchdown. And for Chase, that's now nine touchdowns in his last nine games. Yeah, he's been off to, he's been on a tear to finish the year. By the way, that offensive line looked pretty good on that drive that we we're all worried about. Dead. Burrow never got touched. Here's Hines from the two. Splits right between those two defenders and he gets to the 23. So Josh Allen running out. You see what he did last week. He did give it away three times, but the 352, that was a career high in the playoffs. He did get knocked down and sacked seven times by the Dolphins, but he's had three straight playoff games going back to last year with 300 yards and at least three touchdown passes. Yeah, he's he was on a tear, obviously, last week. He had a couple of the turnovers. Not all of them were his fault, but you're not going to be able to beat Cincinnati if you're going to have seven sacks and three turnovers. I can tell you that. Same for Cincinnati. Both these quarterbacks have to protect the ball today. Kinsey in motion circling around and they are able to get it over to him. Hendrickson has the angle and up to make the hit is the rookie Taylor Britt out of Nebraska. Well, Josh Allen, he had 35 touchdown passes in the regular season, tied for second best in the league with 
Joe Burrow, Joe both Burrow. at 35. Yeah, they're both, they both can use their legs. I mean, you saw the little bit of movement from Burrow on the touchdown pass. I think you're going to see Josh Allen use his legs a lot today, Jim. I think as you see them get closer. You want to protect your franchise quarterback? Well, when you're in the playoffs in big games, you're going to see him in the red zone. He's going to run the ball. Got a second and eight. Went to the sideline, and Diggs is there. Look at that tackle. And again, back-to-back -back plays made by Taylor Britt. Holds them to four. Lou Anarumo is the D coordinator on this side. What he's done has been nothing short. I mean, it's spectacular. Last year, he came up with an incredible plan on how to defend Patrick Mahomes in that championship game, and it gave them a chance, and it really was the difference, I felt like, in the second half to send them to the Super Bowl. And what he's done this year is really take that, evolve it. They are simple, but they get a lot of guys up in there, Jim, at the line, and you see different guys pop out, other guys come, and it's just really hard on quarterbacks. Third and four. Here they come. Josh flicks it in time, and it's over the outstretched arm of Diggs, who was open. The pressure from Osai forced him to have to hurry it and ended up overthrowing it. You see the in little stutter route and the ball's just a little high, but the difference on this is this right here. This is why Lou Anarumo is doing such a good job. He makes a guy who's pressuring is Pratt, and he's going to go against Singletary running back. Well, that creates a little bit of that internal pressure that you want to get quarterbacks. You know, the great quarterbacks, they don't like internal pressure. That's a great way of doing it. Three and out for the Bills. Sam Martin sends it down toward Trent Taylor. It's Taylor from the 18. Ten yard run back. That's after a 53 yard punt. You're watching the divisional playoffs presented by Intuit Turbo Tax on CBS. Well, Caribbean, this is all the vacations. Come seek. Liberty Mutual Insurance only pay for what you need. And by Pepsi, made for football watching. What a day to watch. Sit back and enjoy divisional football. Catch a few snowflakes. This matchup, the biggest win streaks by two teams ever coming into a divisional round game. Eight for the Bills, nine for Cincinnati, the all-time franchise mark. And here they start their second drive from the 28. It's Mixon. Edmonds is there, and he wrestles him down after about four. That first drive was something else, Tony. It really was, because the design overloaded to a side, but you see the ability to get people off of press, but really the secondary opportunity that's created by Carmen, the left tackle. And that was one of the parts that we were worried about. You're not going to be able to move around in the pocket and get to the second level, get guys to go inside, come back out. You thought it had to be quick game. This is a great sign for Cincinnati. Run the football and still have the ability to move around the pocket. Second and six. Oh, what a big opening for Mixon. And he gets all the way to the 50. Adenogy, the right tackle is in for Collins as of a couple of weeks ago. This time I've mentioned so many different blockers. He made the play for 16. But you're going to see right here just a pulling. <laughs> like you said, Adenogy just this is really impressive right now. This is what the Bengals did against the Ravens in that later in that game, right? You saw their identity. They're going to run it more than they did all year. But when the game gets tough or gets later, then you're going to give the ball to Burrow and let him throw it. He's already got 100 yards of offense, this team. Not even seven minutes in, and Higgins now gets on the board with a reception as Elam, who had the interception last week, is able to tackle him down after six. They've run nine plays. Everyone has gained at least four yards, and they've been over 20 on three of them. And they have this first quarter dominance that you can see over the last four games. It's now up to 32-0 in the opening quarter. Yeah, and then Cincinnati's unbelievable when they're leading after the first quarter. They're like 18 and one in their last 19. Second and four. Piran gets a handle. Big body that was a teammate of Mixon's at Oklahoma for a couple of years is right. Well, he's past the first down yardage. They've got yet another first down. That gives them their sixth. Style and substance. Yep, that's that's the combo. He was talking style. Substance here. He's just already gone past now with that mark in the postseason. With four wins 
There's the style, by the way. Looked like you showing up to the game today. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, they usually call me just uh, the fashion king of the world. So my wife always says, you're so stylish today, honey. You look, you look stunning. First and That's 10. There's Burrow to Higgins. Nobody near him. And he knows where to go to get the first down. They have another one. Every play is a big chunk, it seems like, Tony. It's very difficult. The footing out there is very difficult right now for the Bills. And part of that, though, is because these are great players. T. Higgins, second-round pick from Clemson. And this is a number one. I know everyone knows about Chase, but he really is a number one, Jim. This guy, and almost any other team, you would be defending him and figuring out how to double-team him. Caught two touchdowns in the Super Bowl last February. And you asked him yesterday, what's his gift? And he said... The ability to use my size. He also can play a lot smaller, too. He's a big target. Here's Chase getting the rush for about four. That is an incredible combination when you talk about those two number ones that they have. Oh, it's really, I mean, you give them Burrow, and then you get those two. And this is a good job by the coaching staff. You never know how it's going to go early. So Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan coming up with a way to get one of your star players the ball. Sometimes you can go a long time, right? We saw it. Where, like, someone like Waddle doesn't touch the ball for a long time, right? Yeah. Miami last week, and then uh, they get a little frustrated, so good job. By the way, the third's pretty good, too. Boyd, here's a second and seven. And that's Milano quickly on Piran, but he is such a load, he's able to drag it out for an extra three or four. It will be third down on the way. And that's one of the areas you'd want to attack a Bills team is right in the middle of the field, because that's where the coverage is, but not against that guy, Milano. First team all pro, well deserving. He had two sacks last week, playing the best football of his career, and really as well as anyone in the National Football League at the linebacker position. He's right there with three or four other guys that they've separated. Uh, his movement as Basham comes running after. Burrow and tackles him at the 33-yard line. This is a great job of drawing him off sides with a silent count. Two new snap counts this week. Number 55, defense. A five-yard penalty results in a first down. Well, you're going to watch. Sharping 74. The right guard, he's looking back. He signals to him, hey, here's the snap count. Go ahead right there. He puts his hand up, and normally it's going to come right when the center's head goes down. But they've waited with a delay, and that's where Joe Burrow did a good job this week coming up with two new silent snap counts, and he really thought they'd get him, and he waited for third and three, Jim. Nine minutes into the game and eight first downs. Over to Mixon. Edmonds with the tackle, but another five. Another five. For the Bengals, who again are marching down as they did with the opening series, making quite a statement here in this first quarter. Uh, I'd be concerned if I'm a Bills fan right now. This is very scary because what makes the Bills incredible on defense throughout the whole year, Leslie Frazier, Sean McDermott, this system, is you always have help. You have people coming, from, and they all know their leverage, and they know how to, if they're going somewhere, they miss on this side. Right now, the footing on the field isn't allowing it. Second and five. They feed it to Mixon, and he's tackled behind the line this time. It's Milano at two sacks and two tackles for a loss last week. He's got one right there, loss of two. This is why he's an all-pro. He's going to get all the way outside, stack, and then fire and finish the play. This is it, though. The game's going to come down to this, Jim. Red zone, third down plays. Which quarterback is going to score touchdowns and which one is going to kick field goals in this game? That's what I think determines the winner or loser. And Joe yesterday thought that was going to be so essential to his team's hopes. Third and seven. To the end zone. Open! Wide open! Hurst hauls it in for another Cincinnati touchdown. And you're seeing why offensive coordinator Brian Callahan and Zach Taylor have the third best Red zone offense, or top five, I should say, red zone. And that's, they create all of these things. Chase is a decoy on a screen, and Hurst is wide open. They just challenge you in so many areas. What a design. Brian Callahan, like we said, getting all the looks now, right? 
to be a head coach, as he should. He knows every, every position, I swear, on offense. It's stunning how open the Bengals are finding themselves. And now the extra point for McPherson. This one, 72 yards, 10 plays, and another extra point. Didn't it look like this the first time they played, though? It did. The Bengals kind of looked like this then. The man with the cape is 9 for 9 to six different receivers and a pair of touchdown tosses. The last one going to Hurst, who Burrow totals is smart and athletic, fast twitch, good and scramble drill situations and he loves having his tight end healthy and first year after being signed by way of Atlanta in the offseason this will lead to a touchback and now the Bills find themselves in an early giant hole we have next Sunday after the AFC championship game on CBS a special new episode of TV's top new series fire country it's next Sunday on CBS don't know how I'm could even imagine you come out at home and you would have run three plays to this point that's it and find yourself 14 down I asked him this question yesterday I said we were discussing if you get behind at home as you see a possible pressure coming from the right side Singletary and that's Pratt on him quickly gain of about three and what did he say well I mentioned I said you know how do you handle the mental side because what happened last week when he had three turnovers really quickly, it allowed Miami to get back in the game. Like I said, some are the quarterback's fault, some aren't. But he came right back when that game was close late and threw that incredible ball in the corner to, to big game Gabe, <laughs> that we called him. And Gabriel Davis made that play, but I said, how did you get back there mentally and everything? And then we talked about early in the game when you get behind, that's the best attribute of what he's learned in his four or five years in the NFL. Second and seven, it's Cook. Rookie rusher out of Georgia, and again, the Bengals are really alert every time the ball gets in the hands of one of the backs or receivers, and they're on them quickly. Gain of two, that's all. Eleven straight quarters, Lou Anarumo's defense has not surrendered a first quarter touchdown. A little slip there, so Cook was not in high gear when he got it. And I mentioned the footing earlier. This is going to be very hard on defenses out here. That's why you don't want to get too far behind if you're Buffalo because defensive guys don't know where you're going. So when it's slippery, they want to give you more space. Third and five looking for the first first down. Hendrickson from behind, and the ball is tossed and is picked up, scooped up. And will they rule that? A fumble or an incompletion is Vaughn Bell with the football. This is why, just a three-man rush. This is what happened against Patrick Mahomes last year. People are up in there, but you only rushed three. But somebody with a great effort, and this time, it's Trey Hendrickson. It's an incomplete pass, just to clarify. And Hendrickson comes off the edge, just goes right around Dawkins. And right now, it looks like Cincinnati is absolutely dominating. And they're lucky that's called... And then complete pass a little bit, don't you think? I know he's trying well, to. I think I saw him flick it enough. Gene Steratore would know more about that. What did you think, Gene? Yeah, it is a forward pass, and Singletary's in the vicinity, too. Just another uh, strength of Josh Allen. From the 19, Taylor wiggles and gets past the 30. Nine to nothing on first downs. 14 to nothing on the board. The Bengals. So impressive nightmare start the bell on CBS is sponsored by New Balance. We got now. And by Subway. Subway's upping their game with the Subway series menu. Well, two touchdown drives for Cincinnati. And handling the football now for the third time. Meanwhile, two times for the Bills with possession, three plays and a punt. Burrow. That ball in and out of the hands of Wilcox and all the talk about would he have enough time hasn't been an issue so far. No, it hasn't been an issue. And you see all the read and react coverages that Buffalo's made really difficult on opposing quarterbacks is hurting them in this game because they're all looking at Burrow and he's using that to his advantage. Like 
moving defenders. Buffalo plays these match zone, match man kind of coverages, and they react. So these guys are all looking at the eyes of the quarterback while trying to cover their guy. That was the first incompletion for Burrow. After nine for nine, and there's a second. That's Dane Jackson reaching up and denying. It's a great job by Dane Jackson. Rerouting, but this is a great design by defensive coordinator. They switched it up. This is where Buffalo changes. You saw Jackson, childhood friend and college teammate of Tamar Hamlin, make the breakup on the pass play and then give the Hamlin heart sign. Lucky Third and ten. Complete for the first to Irwin, who's been a very good situational player for this team this year. Pick up a 13. The eyes right here. Joe Burrow's going to hold Edmonds inside. That's why he's a little late. That penalty's declined there, but talking about two of the best third and long teams, both in the top five in the National Football League, and that's why these quarterbacks separate. He just found, you know, it's not just going to go to Chase or just going to go to Higgins. It depends on the coverage and where people are. Thank you. They reset the clock. So the offsides call against Buffalo declined, and Cincinnati continues to move the chains. Given the chain gang a workout in this opening quarter with 10 now first downs. Burrow almost pulled in. That was Boyd trying to reel it in. It was close. And I think you're going to see, this is what you're going to find now out of Buffalo. They're going to get up and play man-to-man -man tight coverage as Taron Johnson does a really good job. You know, he's just one of the more unsung heroes on this defense and football team. Buffalo never has to be stressed about the matchups in the slot. They can play man or zone because of this guy right here. He blitzes. He got beat last week, but he came back, remember, and knocked it out with a perfect play. Well, Leslie Frazier told us yesterday he considers him to be the best slot corner in the NFL. Here's a second and ten. As Mixon runs it to a whole group of Bills defenders held the three. Now they'll have just their third third down of this opening quarter. Right here, do you pressure or do you not pressure? So far in this game, you've gotten beat situationally. But no one's as good at adjusting as Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott have been this last couple years. Put everyone up in there, Jim, and do you come after them with someone right here? Matt Milano maybe right there, 58. They rush only three. They've got pressure on him. Burrow is sacked. It's Milano. He was actually kind of just staying back a little bit as a spy. That's exactly right, Jim. He was sitting there, and he's spying. So he was the fourth rusher, but he decides not to go right away because he would have been blocked. So he waits, 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 and then the vision, as soon as Burrow moves, now he goes and gets him, and you're not getting away from Milano. That's why he's first team all pro. This is why... Buffalo improves as the day goes on. They start to learn what you're trying to do. But they do need a score here, I think. Final seconds of the first quarter. And Chrisman, the first year out of Ohio State. This one bounces near the 20. Didn't catch that one the way he had hoped. And they will mark it right at about the 20-yard line. Back in 30 after this from State Farm. Jake from State Farm, I really want that personal price plan. So I'll admit it, I'm a bath bomb guy. Dude, you do not need to get that personal. The State Farm personal price plan simply helps you create an affordable price just for you. For real? Who's ready for their jazz bath? No? <laughs> Who is that guy? Jazz bath? Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. John McDermott's team has seen 160 yards posted 
against his Bills defense. Final play, most likely, of the first quarter. Bills have only managed 11 yards and not a single first down. There's Allen in trouble, and he's going to be sacked by Vaughn Bell, who comes up from his safety position. Well, you want to talk about a first quarter? Cincinnati did it, and they are not scared. They're coming after Josh Allen. So far, it's been a success. Emily watching from one of the suites. I'm talking to Josh Allen about how these two teams came together that Monday night of January 2nd. He said, really respect those guys, that city, how gracious they were that night and beyond with DeMar. Start the second quarter. The second and 13 after they just sat down the last play of the first fires it in there for a first down their first of the game that's Diggs with the reception you're gonna see a deep curl route you see Cole Beasley coming back he's gonna get a lot of time today I think they're about to get into a drop back game but really going no huddle start him out here motion him down come on down Cole Play action, taken off with it. Allen. That ends with Tupo making the tackle along with Hilton. Pick up a four. Really good job by Josh Allen here. I thought it was going to be a motion into a, another drop back, but there, it's an RPO. And he uses his legs, but he's going to have to do a lot today, Jim. Going to have to use those legs today. Second and six. Or rushing. Pass diving attempt for the reception, and it's made by Gabe Davis for another first down right at the 50. Gain of nine. This is really well done. Josh Allen, go ahead and pause that. Boom. He looked to the left, and that moves everyone's eyes over there so he can find that window. He creates it. You're going to have a hard time playing zone today against these quarterbacks because we are, like I talked about, the leverage, the footing on the field, Jim. Once you look and start moving your body weight one way, you can't recover. Hendricks and Hubbard both out for this snap, and it's a quick toss to Diggs. Here they come back in, 91 and 94. Seven yards on the catch by Diggs. 91-94 create a lot of issues. Sam Hubbard had a great season this year. He's a Swiss Army knife for them. He'll spy. He'll pressure the quarterback. He'll drop. And Hendrickson, high motor on your bottom of the screen. Second and three. Here's Beasley. First down to the 30. Very similar play to before. This time, Beasley, though, didn't motion down. He started down in there, and they run a bubble outside. And this is creating a little bit of an issue, spreading out the Bengals right now. Five receivers. Bill's trying to heat up after only eight yards in the opening quarter. Hendrickson, one of those coming after him. And there's the throw out of bounds. Hubbard was also in the area. We just saw the Hamlin family up in one of the suites a moment ago. And for more, let's go to Tracy. Jim DeMar Hamlin returned to the facility this week. Sean McDermott telling us it was so good to have him around. He told us it's baby steps right now. It's all completely up to Hamlin, how involved he wants to be every day. A spokesperson close to the family said despite being out of the hospital, he still has a lengthy recovery. He requires oxygen and he has his heart rate monitored regularly, but he is upbeat. He's positive, And I was told he has a big smile on his face. Well, that smile will get a little wider if the Bills can manage to continue this drive toward the end zone after this 14-point deficit at the start. It's just so great to have him in the stadium. 100%. I mean, just uh, all the prayers and thoughts for him and his family. It's just been incredible to see. And for him to be here today, what a reward and gift to have. You know, everyone was rooting for him <laughs> across the, the world, honestly. And the Bengals yesterday, amazing. when we met with them yesterday, they all said they hoped he would be here yes. to see him. It's crazy how it brings people together, just real life. Third and two. Here's Cook. Oh, he knew he needed to get a little more out of that. I think he's going to be spotted just about a foot short. 
That was DJ Reader clogging up that area right down the first down yardage. I mean, Buffalo finally starting to run the football. Before then, you know, these last two runs, outside of Josh Allen, they only ran it one time. And I think this is what both teams need to do. They need to run the football. Everyone's preparing so much. Well, they're going for it here. Yeah. And fourth and a foot. Singletary comes back in. Motion, give it to him quickly, or quarterback sneak it right away. Josh is 10 out of 11 on the year on third and one. Make that 11 out of 12. He's got enough for the first down. Yeah, that's where teams have gotten so smart over the years. Now, all of a sudden, if you're going to quarterback sneak it, you have another play. So if they get everyone in there, you can hand it off on a motion. But right there, when they've got a little bit of width to them on the D-line, you can just run it right up the middle. A little bottom push right there <laughs> little tush push I knew you were going there Spencer Brown <laughs> was the one credited with that a new statistical category Let's get it. Tush push. first and ten watch out oh they're putting pressure on it but he's able to weave through it pick up about four or five a ball came out after he hit the ground what are they gonna rule here rule him down we do have a marker out as well Holding number 71 offense 10 yard penalty first down called on Ryan Bates. They have been putting pressure on him. They got into him once almost had him a second time. But watch there. That's the hole. But look at the swim move by reader right there coming flying in. I don't know about the call holding right there. That's the call. That's a flop if I've seen it. But you're going to get called for it at the point of attack. But right now, this defensive line is dominating the Buffalo Bills offensive line. We thought coming into this game it might be the other way. Yeah. But no, this reader, who's had an outstanding year, Hubbard, Hendrickson, this is a formidable front. This is why they only have to rush three guys sometimes. And, and B.J. Hill, who you thought was acting a little bit on that one. Here's a first and 20. And Cook for four or five. This drive has now reached five minutes long. You can run it anytime you want in this game. Five yards is right there for you. Inside the NFL, the show the pros watch Tuesdays, streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Second and 16. From the 27. Little shoulder fake and goes to the right side to an open Shakir. And he's shoved out by Bates. Shakir, who came up last week with four catches, three catches after having 10 on the season. That goes for 23. Right here. He looks left. Pump fakes. He moves him. Everyone's looking. You can't play zone today because the footing doesn't allow you to recover. If a quarterback is going to go ahead and have a little bit of time, as Allen stands in and... That's a huge throw. Keep Buffalo's playoff hopes alive. I mean, if they didn't get points on this drive, Jim, this would have been a tall task, truly. That was Hill who knocked him down. Allen back under center from the four. First and goal. Quickly on Singletary, who fights just to get back to the line of scrimmage. You're so impressed with Cincinnati this year. I mean, they... They tackle as well as any football team. They keep leverage as well as any football team. It reminded me all those years we were going up to New England, and we'd watch how everyone kept their leverage perfectly. You know, you're guarding a guy, and you have help on the inside. You're guarding him on the outside shoulder. You keep your weight distribution correct, and then you tackle, and you form tackle, and you keep the cup where you surround the ball carrier. That's exactly what this team does. Fundamentals. Second and goal. Allen's taken off with it, but he's not going to take off. Hold on a minute. Look at this effort. Wow. Almost took two defensive linemen with him, at least two, one of whom was Carter. Supo was another. Got about a yard within payday. Well, he gets inside. And by the end, he gets pushed all the way. But they're going to use his legs in the red zone. You know that. In big games, they always do that. But just the strength. And Morris and, and a Brown. little help us, Saffold yeah. guys helping out there. But third and goal. Was there a big third and or third and one from a goal line last week for any of these teams? Oh, I wonder. Cincinnati did good last time. There's the touchdown as he goes off left guard and has a few words to say 
to Jesse Bates. You want a rivalry? People had started to develop that right away about the Bills and the Chiefs. Well, guess what? Cincinnati's here now, and you've got three teams that you know, and these quarterbacks are going to be in it over the next decade, over and over again. These games are huge. That's why the emotion of this, Josh Allen, he knows how big this is. That's Damar on the reaction to that touchdown. Standing and applauding as Josh Allen, who had seven rush touchdowns during the regular season, gets one here. They take a drive that goes over a half quarter long. Seven minutes and 39 seconds to put something on the board. 14 seconds. And then third and one away from the goal line also converts for the score. Five out of six on that drive. It was very much needed if you're a Bills fan right there. 14-0, not looking good. I do think that these two teams are going to kind of figure out, you know, how to slow the other one down. Here's Bass with the kick. We'll bring it out to the 25. Tracy, down to you. Jim, there's a bond between these two teams, between these two fan bases. The support for each other started back in 2017 when the Bengals win over the Ravens sent the Bills to the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. Bills Mafia donated more than $400,000 to Andy Dalton's charity. Then after Jamar Hamlin collapsed on the field, Bengals fans came out in support, held vigils, and donated thousands of dollars to DeMar's foundation. The respect these two franchises have for each other is evident, but obviously on hold today, Jim. Yeah, you're right, but that's awesome to see. And let's not forget, too, Andy Dalton wrote a healthy check, too, just in the last few weeks. Great show of sportsmanship between these cities and franchises as P. Ryan takes it for four yards. You see... Joe Burrow right there just quickly getting through progressions. That's really the development. He knows football. It's such a high level for a guy this young and, you know, just his ability to process information and get through it. I'm thoroughly impressed. And then they asked him the championship window. How long is this championship window open over for? Burrow says, as long as I'm playing football, my whole career is the championship window. Yeah, well, that's the way he thinks. You know yes, that. Yes. It's got to be true, too. Second and six. It goes to first, and they'll mark him for the first down. And I agree with him. He's really come on and impressed me. As you well, see Hayden Hurst, who's got some rare abilities too, plays well inside, outside, does a lot for them. Everybody tries to come up with some sort of comparison. Joe Burrow to someone else. Even the Joe Cool moniker is is a is a spin off the same moniker for Joe Montana, but. He has this laser focus. He told us in one of our meetings this year, I'm always chasing chasing perfection. And you can see it. No question. I mean, he's he's likable when you're around him, right? He's not. There's game day Joe, though. That's the different one. This is game day Joe. On first down. That's Mixon. And they're running the ball effectively. That one for 12. We got an injury update from Tracy. Well, Jim, the Bengals, as we know, already without three starting offensive linemen. Ted Karras right now really struggling. The anchor of this line hurt that right knee on the last drive. They put a brace on it. He was trying to do some lateral movement on the side. He was definitely wincing in pain. He's fighting through it. But it is evident that it is bothering him, Jim. That is just a, hard to believe how it's going right through the line. With Collins a couple of weeks ago, Kappa, Williams all out. Here's first and ten. Going deep. And Chase had two build defenders in the area, including Dane Jackson. This was a big time route right here. Watch this. He's going to go up, makes you feel something, then just runs right by you as if it's not even, as if you're not even guarding him. Dane Jackson there didn't have a chance. We haven't seen that deep ball nearly as much for Chase this year. His average per catch is down this year, about six yards per catch from his rookie year when he was the offensive rookie of the year. Well, everyone was playing single high man-to-man -man and trying to figure out kind of double team once in a while or not. Now everyone's playing two high safeties. As you see right here, Buffalo's doing the same thing. When you put both these safeties back, you're not going to get as many deep balls. Second and ten, right in the middle of the field. It's Hurst. Somersaulting to the 35 as Marlowe makes the tackle, but that's 19 more for the Bengals. Well, Hurst is going to come right in and right there. Pause that. Remember I talked about the two safeties? Well, he's looking left, and he's just holding the inside backers. 
he doesn't throw the ball outside on those go routes to chase like you talked about the numbers being down he goes inside and that's the evolution joe burrow has learned where to go with the ball more consistently for how teams defend him first down play action and it goes to wilcox and ed oliver comes back to make the tackle but that's eight more for cincinnati this is an outstanding quarterback play by burrow throwing from a phone booth checking it down that should have been a sack or a throwaway and for him to get eight yards out of that that keeps your team in phase he has already connected with eight different receivers i mean he's so accurate he gets through i mean if he retired right now jim he would literally exactly lead the nfl history for completion percentage all time <laughs> it's like he's he's gonna get to the right spots second and two It's P. Ryan, and again, he got a good four or five yards before anyone put a hand on him and a first down at the 20. This is what happens sometimes. Backup offensive linemen have one thing in common sometimes. They don't mind. You know, they're still big. Most of the time, they're bigger than D linemen. So when backup offensive linemen come in, you can technically still run the ball. And I think you're seeing that trait with some of these guys. I mean, Sharping, Dennis Jay, these guys have played before. Yeah, Sharping was a second-round pick into the league with the Texans. Had 33 starts in Houston. First and 10. And Burrow saw the pressure coming from Epinesa. Takes the incompletion. We got the Verizon Halftime Report coming up shortly with J.B., Phil, Nate, Boomer, and Coach Cower. All the latest NFL news and Highlights from the first half here coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. So far, Cincinnati has finished off drives and have gotten closer. Yep, this is drive four. The first two went for touchdowns. Which is surprising because Buffalo's number two in the NFL in red zone defense. We'll see if they can live up to that here. Second and ten. It's Mixon breaking outside. And tripped up by Jackson. Dane Jackson making some plays, including a great pass defense that helped stop the Bengals the only time they failed to score. Yeah, and that's what this defense does. These corners, they tackle. And not everyone's looking for that, and not everyone wants to do it, but this team really does that. And you see that on Dane Jackson, Taron Johnson, everyone. A huge play right here, Jim. Third and four. Just inside the 15. And timeout called by Cincinnati. We'll be back in 30 after this from Progressive Insurance. Why is it looking at? Well, I'm not a cat expert because we don't have a cat. I'm telling you that I shut the slider last night. Are you sure about that? I closed it. Why don't we check the replay? That is very aggressive. I don't think. This What Really Happened replay is brought to you by Progressive. One thing no one would challenge, saving money when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. Uh, yeah, that does look like me. Hmm. That's because it is you. When we were talking to Joe last night, he was talking about these third down plays in the red zone as four point plays. Difference between the touchdown and settling for a field goal. Well, he's going to need something right here because everyone's up in the line. Your back's going to have to stand up. He's calling out the protection. Do this. We know what to do. Throw it right away. He does. Chase. Look at Chase and Edmonds. And the pin down by Edmonds, but Chase, he's going to be able to make the nifty move before anybody can get him. Get the first down. First and goal. It's a numbers game right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You only got five linemen and one back. You only got six. Ball's got to come out right away. So you pick your top offensive weapon and throw him the ball very quickly, and he'll get the first down for you. Well done right there by Burrow. Tredavious White, so respected, was the corner on the coverage. But here's a first and goal from the six. Toss. Mixon. Give him one. White makes the tackle that time. You're watching the divisional playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax on CBS. We reached a two-minute warning during that timeout. 
they made the announcement that Tamar is in the building and everyone stood on their feet and found him in that suite. And he signaled back. Here's second and goal. Burrow is going to throw it through the back of the end zone. Well, they did that because right there they need a stop here and DeMar stood up, right? Yeah, he did. This is it right here. What a scene. Oh. That's his, that's his sign. What a beautiful triumphant story that galvanized this entire nation and well beyond the football universe. Yes, it is. Here's a third and goal coming up as Cincinnati. He would always use that heart with his team way before his whole career there. And they stopped the play with a flag. Full start. Number 79, offense. Five yard penalty. And you can tell when this thing gets loud in here, some of the loudest areas are down inside those 10 yard lines for an opposing team. And you're trying to figure out the snap count right there. And it was very small. Yeah, it wasn't much. Maybe just a little bit early for Carmen, the left tackle. But that's the first flag of the game on Cincinnati. You could feel the nervousness right now. A lot of quarterbacks would feel that. Game day Joe hasn't shown a case of nerves very often in big games. Third and goal to the end zone. Chase. Touchdown. What a catch. Wow, that's exactly what we talked about, Jim. These two guys right here, I mean, they're in rare territory. 23-year-old Chase doing stuff no one's done since Randy Moss as a quarterback. They're going to be doing this for 10, 15 more years, and that ball was perfectly thrown. And I said, what a in the catch. Only spot, what a pass. It was a perfect ball and a perfect catch. Back shouldered, high pointed. Your guy catches it or no one. And that's a double team, and it doesn't matter. These two are going to be incredible for such a long time. Second touchdown of the game for Jamar Chase. Burrow with three first half touchdown, touchdown passes. They're going to review it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a, oh, we're looking at the ball, actually. Okay, the I mean, ball. Jane, kind of you're the one that has the trained eye. What do you see? Well, the feet are really good, as we've seen. And, and I think what we're looking for right now is the football. And does he have firm control? The ball does move. But as he's backpedaling, uh, it's, he still has to have that firm control, uh, right, with two feet inbounds. This is very difficult because the ball's going to move right here. And Milano reaches in and pushes it. So the ball is not technically grasped fully yet. Here we go. Watch right here, Gene. He moves the ball in his hand for him. Okay. But see how it's still spinning there? That's where the concern is for me. And he reaches his hand out. I don't know if of, that looks like a catch. It's out of his hands when it finally he gets to his back, isn't it, Gene? Right there. That's the toughest part. Yeah, what, what you're looking for, too, guys, is if Jamar Chase firmly possesses that football initially, then the movement of the ball becomes less important, right? But, but, but because he doesn't appear, in my opinion, to have firm control of that football on the front end, he's got to secure that ball. I feel that the ball continuously moves throughout that process, uh, and my feeling is that they may overturn this to incomplete as a result of that. And remember, this was on third and goal. Yeah, this is four-point play right here. Yeah. This is right here. It's, it's a touchdown, right? He moves it. Does he control it right there? So that's the... This is the part right here, Gene. Let's talk about this. Go back to when he catches this ball. After review, oh. the receiver lost receiver control lost. of the ball. It is an incomplete pass. The ball will be placed at the 10 yard line. Fix up the game clock to 152. 152, please. Well, it was Milano who did it. Milano never gave up on the play. Get ready to pause it right there. So at that point, He's going to create possession again, but his feet are going to be right out. And by the time he does that, I think it's the correct call. Good job, Gene. You were dead on it. So they have to go field goal instead with McPherson. 15 for 15 in his postseason 
career. Of course, just second year. He was such a star last year winning games against Tennessee and Kansas City to send him to the Super Bowl. This from 28. McPherson's kick is good. Woo, for a second. Wow. Oh, it sure looked like touchdown, but. It did. I mean, I thought it was for sure, but Cincinnati's still off to a great start. But the Bills can get back in it. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Amazon. Spin less, sp smile more. And Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Well, now the Bills have a chance for back-to-back -back possessions. 149 to go in the first half. They are the best team in the league on the season in the last two minutes of the first half. And then having deferred to the top, they'll be getting the third quarter kick. Well, that's what these games, like almost all these playoff games, we saw it last year, right? They come down to two-minute drives, end of half, end of game situations. Here's Hines. And they're on him quickly again to about the 20, 21 yard line. Back with Tony and Gene. Great to have you in the booth again. Great to be here again. We're starting to keep you busy again, but you thought that yeah. was the right call. I did. I did. It was the right call because Chase just didn't secure it on the front end quickly enough to then let that movement be kind of movement with control. I'm not sure if you're a Bengal fan, you think that's the right call. <laughs> if you're well, a Bill fan, you think you it is. You know, Tony, when you're a ref, half of everybody doesn't like anything <laughs> that you do, Tony. Well, that's also if you're just uh, Tony <laughs> Rumbo. It's the same thing. Half of everyone doesn't like you, and the other half mostly don't like you. Uh, Gene, for what oh. it's worth, I would say well more than half the crew here likes you. Well, okay? I appreciate that, Jim. <laughs> <That's> I mean, <laughs> maybe, Gene, maybe. There's Knox. I mean, with... half is a lot, Jim. I mean, I'm being generous. He's the best guy. I mean, five yards. Pass play. To Dawson Knox. And and this is where it's going to be troublesome for Cincinnati because the explosiveness, the drop back game, Josh Allen's, you know, years in the league now. He knows how to get the stuff and he can use his legs and he can create big plays. Second and five and it appeared to be deflected at the line of scrimmage and it's already third down. Again, we got Verizon halftime report coming up. There's the Bengal legend right there, that left hand. We'll take the Cincinnati Bengals to the Super Bowl. Boomer and J.B., Phil, Nate, and Coach Cower. Highlights from the first half on the Verizon Halftime Report. Now try not to give the football right back to Cincinnati. This is a monster play right here. I mean, I'd come after him. Complete for the first. You can't give that ball. If you're Buffalo down 10 and you have to punt that back. You have to assume Cincinnati's going to go down, especially with the way they've been playing in this first half and score. So this was a huge play, and he goes to Knox, who's had a great run here. Yeah. Six, seven games in a row with touchdowns. Well, it's five. Maybe you're uh, giving you the extra two. Uh, yeah, maybe you've got a sneak preview or something later on. I don't know, but it's five in a row, which is a Bengal or Bills team record. Look at that catch. Oh, my goodness. There's your big game Gabe coming up with a big catch. Big game game. He does it all the time when we do games with him. And right there over Eli Apple, who had a great week of practice this week. That ball could only be in one spot. And that is where Josh Allen, the alien, can make certain throws that very few other people can make. Which Gabe Davis has had a touchdown in the last three Buffalo playoff games. Six total. That was the longest play of the game. And another deflection. That's the second time on this series. They get a hand on it. Of course. This, this is rare. Teams are coming really, you know, it's a tip ball by Pratt 57, but Miami came after Buffalo. And they gave up some stuff, but they also had a lot of success, and teams are doing that's rare for a great quarterback to see that much pressure. And you see Wilson, who knocked the ball out of the hands last week of Huntley that led to the Hubbard near 100-yard run back, longest in postseason history. Putting him up in there because both backers are in there. Second and ten. A little sidearm sling, and that was in the air for a while, and Hilton was trying to get after it off the hands of Singletary. And with with the feel like this, uh, third and ten on the way, Jay Feely, what are you thinking as far as the kickers? You know, I think they need to get a little bit more yards. You want to get to about the 35, six more yards to be on the edge of field goal range. You know, when this conditions are like this, Jim, you can't be as aggressive through the ball 
you have to be smooth through it, which is going to negate some of your distance. This stadium opened in 1973. Of course, they had a long period where they did not make the postseason. But back in the day, we all know what they did. There's only been one 50-yard field goal plus in postseason history here. Third and ten. Allen in trouble. Flag is out. It's going to throw on the run toward the end zone. And incomplete. Diggs was down there. This will be a hold on the Bills, which means you're going to have a really tough call. Ooh. Number 73. This Offense. is huge. Penalty declined. declined. Results of the play. Fourth down. This, you might go for it on fourth and ten here because you're probably a little too far to kick the field goal. But third and 20. Ah, uh, Do you punt? Oh, it's a tough call. They bring out Sam Martin. Fans want him to go for it. This is probably the right call. I'm tempted to line up and at least see what coverage see if i could draw them off sides jim and try and get five yards if i don't i take the penalty five yards back and then punt well, here he comes end over end remember the bengals will have two timeouts and fair catch made by taylor near the 10. we'll get the ball back 40 seconds to go Thursday night before Super Bowl 57, the NFL's brightest stars will be recognized for the best plays and moments from the season. Tune in to NFL Honors Thursday, February 9th, 9 p.m. Eastern on NBC and NFL Network. All right, what do you do here? How aggressive do you go after it if you're Cincinnati? You got to be a little aggressive, so it's safe aggressive. So it's a draw, it's a screen, it's a quick, but you got to get a first down. If you don't, you're giving points to Buffalo. So out of the gun. Goes back, sets up the screen to P. Ryan. P. Ryan runs into one of his linemen and gets near the first down. He collided with Sharping, but that got him out of a little bit of a jam. Went out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, and it'll be a first down. It's a perfect play call. Buffalo, you'd think, would be a little bit more prepared for that one. That's one of those, you know, we spy a quarterback. I think sometimes when teams you really expect a screen, I almost spy the screen, right? We're spying that guy with one of the D linemen. He's rushing, but he's really going to grab that running back if all of a sudden he feels the screen. Now first down with 30 seconds. Another screen and tackled after a gain of about five. Clock stops. Timeout called by the Bengals. Yeah, and that first first down allows it to where you could take this down. I still don't want to necessarily throw two incompletions. I'd still do one more. The likelihood of you getting points is less likely, you know, than two incomplete passes, I would say. So and it's almost one of those where let's let's get a draw. Let's do one more. And as soon as we get close to the, you know, we get a first down, we take a timeout and we get very aggressive then. Already more yardage than they had against the Ravens last Sunday night. Yeah. And the Ravens only gave him 51 yards on the ground. You, you Cincinnati know, is 69 today. I'd be aggressive here. I'd take it back, Jim. Honestly, I'm throwing a slant. I'm throwing it into the middle of the field. This is your best chance right here to get a soft zone and get something down the field. There's Burrow. Flicks it. P. Ryan with the first down. I got another timeout called, and that's it for Cincinnati. And Burrow's eyes just creating havoc for Buffalo, getting people open, and Zach Taylor's done a wonderful job since he's been there, and the patience of Mike Brown allowing them to see what Zach Taylor, his vision has been for this football team, but it's been very impressive, and now he's built himself a juggernaut that's going to be there with Buffalo and Kansas City for years to come. Taylor walked out of our meeting last night. We both said, man, that is quiet confidence right there. Well, they've been the underdog for so long, right? Even me in some ways, I was like, you know, I got to see it a little more because I've seen it with Buffalo. I've seen it with them. Right. But I'm telling you, Burrow, Zach Taylor, Chase, these guys, they're for real. Lou Anaruma, I'm so impressed with what they've done. Callahan. I'm a believer. Callahan as well. And this is going to be Burrow taking off again. They don't have a timeout. And that probably block it quickly. You got to get back as fast as you can. Try and get it with five or four. If you get it with one, you can throw a Hail Mary. 
The clock, it was four, you could have thrown it out of bounds. Now you gotta take the Hail Mary shot. That five or four seconds is huge because you could throw another like five to eight yard out quickly. Well, he's got a couple of good receivers to go for the Hail Mary when you got the size of a guy like T. Higgins. We were actually talking to T last night about what we called 50-50 balls that are thrown in his direction with his size. And he said, no, those are 80-20. Yeah, and they so are. This <laughs> might be one of those 80-20s coming up. Well, sometimes, you know, if there were six seconds here, you could throw to the sideline, right? This should be a Hail Mary. They should not be playing sideline defense. Well, look, look at who's running back, including Gabe Davis to the goal line. Gabe Davis is standing actually eight yards deep in the end zone. There he is. Yeah, this is where you had. You remember the Gronk one way back in the day? Oh, yeah. We had him back, but that was for a, I think a kickoff return or a punt return. They've got four defenders inside the 10, plus a fifth, Gabe, standing at the goal line. They reset the play clock. He's back there because the Hail Mary. You want your guy who can jump up, leap, has good vision on the ball, can high point it. Hard part is getting it off. They got away from the rush, and he's able to launch it deep. And Gabe Davis had an easy pick. Yeah, he had a pick to make an awkward <laughs> swipe at it and show no athleticism. Big game Gabe is better on offense than defense. Usually makes those catches in the end zone <laughs> when he's on offense. That's the end of the first half with the score. Cincinnati 17 and Buffalo 7. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon. And a word from your local station. What's up, Einstein? My network has gone kaput. Oh, you tried to save a buck on it. I got what I paid for. Not so smart. Nah, you're still a genius. But there is a smarter way to save. Oh. Switch to Verizon. For a limited time, get Welcome Unlimited for just $25 a line. $25? And it's guaranteed for three years. Brilliant! Well, you would know. I'm switching. I think the bike's probably faster. Now is the best time to switch to Verizon for just $25 a line, guaranteed for three years. The savings that last on the network you want. Verizon. Seventeen to seven, and let's take a look at the game day highlights presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now Burrow, opening drive, found Chase for the touchdown. I mean that's as good a start as you could have, and using your legs, buying time. You know that's what he's done today, and right now, this is really difficult for Buffalo to be. Going into this game, it felt like it was really even. Uh, Cincinnati's three offensive linemen being down, it was like, that's going to be difficult to overcome. But honestly, Jim, the D-line of Cincinnati has dominated this game. That defensive like approach from Lou Anarumo, switching up the defense, playing you know three-man rush, four-man, blitzing, it's really given the Bills a lot of trouble. And you're seeing Josh Allen try and figure out what they're in, and it's just getting everything thrown at him right now. But I think you know they're more physical. Cincinnati right now is winning up front in the trenches on both sides of the ball and that is concerning because that doesn't normally change in the second half in my experience. Here's Hines fielding it to five. Not allowed any big return so far for Hines. Comes up three yards shy of the 30. Tracy down to you. Jim, I spoke with a frustrated Sean McDermott going into the locker room. He said, we are just not doing anything good enough right now. He said, defensively, we need to affect the rhythm of this offense. We need to get pressure on Joe Burrow. Offensively, they need to get into their own rhythm. Now, I can tell you, DeMar Hamlin did come down from the box. He went into the locker room. I'm sure he had words for the team. We'll see if it provides a spark. No, how about that? Wow. Like, they did have that one drive in the first half, touchdown drive that took seven. 35 off the clock and ended with the score. One score they had. So they opened yeah, up. Yeah, but on that one, this. Josh had to throw that one ball to Gabe Davis in between two guys into a spot that was like inhuman. There you see the numbers in the first half. I mean, Burrow thought he had a third touchdown, and that was called back off the review, but still complete 66%. 186 yards tone in these conditions. You got to run the football. If I'm Buffalo, I mean, look at this. These are light boxes. 
So they're getting to the right play. If he wants to come in here, throw it out here. If not, trying to get Diggs involved. He had three for 27 in the first half, and forward progress will give him the first. More balance right now out of Cincinnati. You know, we know both these teams want to throw the football. We know that. But you've got to get back. You've got to run a little bit. I know Josh Allen has to have the ball in his hands, but you've got to get this team, Cincinnati, to at least respect it a little bit. Diggs, who had a quiet game in last year's divisional game, now with four catches in this one. And that is Singletary going down with a fight. Gain of six. Yeah, and that run right there takes a lot of the pressure off the quarterback and the coordinator. You know, Ken Dorsey doesn't have to call a perfect play, and you know, I just feel like right now they're making it very difficult because you're seeing a lot of different stuff. Ken Dorsey right there had a great year. Everyone wanted to talk about Josh Allen and the difference between last year and this year. His stats are almost identical. Yep. Like literally, same completion percentage, yards. It's nuts. Single Terry. First down and Pratt again is there to connect and it makes you very happy to see that's what Ken Dorsey sends and Dorsey who yesterday had a brief interview but an interview virtually with the Carolina Panthers head coaching position on the line. Yeah and that's you know Brian Callahan on the other side these guys are you know accustomed to these things even though that was Dorsey's first one but he knows he has a special position right here as offense coordinator for Buffalo. Biggest thing for Josh Allen is to slow the turnovers down a little bit. He knows that, but that's also his gift is to throw it and be able to make any throw there is. And somehow they keep winning even when they turn it over somewhat. And that's a gift of this team and him. And, you know, if it was just about never making a turnover, well, then you could just protect the ball and take a sack every time. So it's, it's not truly that. These guys are playmakers. Josh has all these throws, but he's just got to throttle it back and, you know, certain moments of games that allow his team not to be put in a bad spot. They, for the record, there's no turnover so far in this game on either side. And that's the thing. If you said, hey, Josh Allen in the third quarter has never turned the ball over, you'd think they'd be winning by 10. Yep. No. you got to make plays. You still have to trust your instincts and let it go. On first down, pressure from Hill. He gets away, and it's Shakir has... Taylor Britt lowers the shoulder to knock him down, but not until it's a gain of 17 and the Bills are driving to open up the third. And at some point, Superman's going to show up, and right there, he's dead in the water. No chance to get away. B.J. Hill has him, but he does create space. And then from there, he throws it to a fifth-rounder, Shakir, who I think sneakily is going to have a huge role on this team next year, Jim. He's sprinkled in right now, but next year, watch out. I think he takes off. He's leading the team in receiving yards so far. 40 <laughs> on two catches. First down from the 31. Allen looking downfield. He's going to keep it and take his two yards. By the way, this is the first time at home that Buffalo has trailed at halftime this season. They only lost the one game, and it was that crazy, wacky, and wonderful game against the Minnesota Vikings. They had so many plots at the end. Circus catches and fumbles at the goal line, and uh, it just never ended without <laughs> one play usurping the next. Yeah. For the last, as McDermott has see, to be happy to see his team finally running the football a little bit, getting yeah. some rhythm going here. It's a high tension situation, though, for him. He knows this drive is huge. Second and eight. Allen still has it. Escapes two tacklers and two more. And gets to within three yards of the first. Boy, he broke some tackles. These are two very different quarterbacks. One highly emotional right here, Allen, but he does a great job. He wants to put his team on his back, and sometimes he has to. And right here, he shows you he's going to will his team that way. The other one a little less emotional, you know, impervious to, like, emotions almost in some way. But right now, both of them are correct in how they're playing in their football career. Josh Allen is going to have to. I can tell you right now take this game over with his legs in mind but as a coach i want to keep it simpler for him use his legs hand the ball off simple stuff well they're going to run it with him on third and two and he stretches out the arm and he's got the first down it's a great play call as i said make it easy for him use his legs hand it off superman will take over at some point and this is kind of that time where he knows this drive is everything 
Bates, who they jawed at one another after Allen had the Bills touchdown from a yard out. And it was Bates who tried to cut off the angle, but Allen able to get there and extend his drive. Cincinnati's made everything very difficult today on Buffalo. And even this drive, Buffalo's doing a great job, but it still feels difficult, doesn't it? Well, they're plotting their way down. Now they're trying to strike gold, and it's incomplete. Wow. That was Apple on the coverage. Diggs. Well, Eli Apple has been known to bite on double moves. Go ahead and watch this. Last week he did. This week, they got him with the ball. Just barely out wide. It's a perfectly thrown ball, but it's a little wide. It's one of those you almost needed to get up a touch earlier. Well, that was a hard fall, and he was uh, gracious enough to help up the uh, unsuspected, unsuspecting participant. Nice all that. Of him. I know you, last time you've done that, you didn't help them up. Right about NFL productions for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the consent of NFL productions is prohibited. We're back out of a timeout, an injury timeout for Stefan Diggs, who heads to the snow covered table and the blue tent about to be erected. Let's hope he's okay. Ran into the wall on that incompletion, second and ten. Allen again and on him quickly. What a catch! Oh, that was some catch by Cole Beasley. And that's a first down. Goes for 12. Uh, we talked about Lou Enarumo, the design. He's really keeping these guys off. Watch right here. Perfectly timed pressure. Josh Allen doesn't see 23 coming around the corner hill. Who's playing because Trey Flowers is a little banged up. But that right there was a huge play. That's all Josh Allen on an RPO. And then having the ability to extend the play and get a first down big time. First and goal with is from nine yards away. Cook tries to cut outside. It's not there. That was Hilton who read the play and brought it to a halt. And Diggs wasn't in the tent for very long. Time to put on the gloves and get back to the huddle. Buffalo's had a great stretch here as far as red zone opportunities. 13 of their last 14 red zone trips have gone for touchdowns. Hines is also into the game. He's not had many touches since he got traded here November 1st on offense. For special teams will never be forgotten for what he did. Second and goal. Allen going to give it to Hines. Not much to gain there as Bell closes in on him. Picks up four. Now third and goal. The discipline of this defense. And Lou Anarumo just getting his players to know their leverage. This is a very physical. They're the best tackling team in the National Football League, and there he is. That guy should be... I mean, there's there's a, multiple guys in this game who should be considered for your football team right now. Five head coaching vacancies, and he should be right up there with what he did. Same with Leslie Frazier. Third and goal. Knox has been tough of late. They're going to go to him. Oh, they did try to... And it passes incomplete Dax Hill with the excellent coverage. Well, and Dax Hill's playing on tight ends because Flowers, number 33, wasn't able to play through injury, and he's banged up, and that's where Dax had to come in. He's not quite as long, but he is quicker and faster, and he does use leverage well, and you see it there. So, again, after having that high touchdown conversion rate of late, they're going to have to go field goal, which... Would bring it back to a one score game. Tyler Bass, 25 yards. And the three. Makes it a 17 to 10 game. Well, that, that took, again, the second time they drove for over seven minutes. This time leads to a field goal. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Intuit TurboTax. Coors Light, made to chill. And by T-Mobile, with price lock guarantee. T-Mobile won't raise your rate ever. It's been 
flurries, snow showers throughout with, again, light winds. That's it. And now we're about to see the Bengals possess the football for the first time in the second half as the Bills went seven minutes, 18 seconds down the field, leading to a fast field goal. And a touchback. And by the way, next Sunday, the NFL and CBS is excited and honored to bring you the AFC Championship presented by Intuit TurboTax. The winner of this game to take on the Chiefs. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern with the NFL today, the AFC Championship next Sunday on CBS. Here's Mixon for about four yards. Again, if Cincinnati wins this game, the Bengals will go back to KC for the second straight year for the Lamar Hunt Trophy, the battle for the AFC. If it's Buffalo, it would be Buffalo and Kansas City at the neutral site in Atlanta. Of course, Philadelphia will host the NFC Championship next week against the winner of the game later tonight, Dallas and San Francisco. And we were meeting with Cincinnati last night, and you could sense everyone saw when the homes got injured. Here's Burrow with Russo. Not able to make up much ground on the quarterback, and that's something Joe doesn't do all that often. They ran for 257 yards of the season, and he picked up a first down. No, he's perfect with it, but the reason this is shocking, like I talked about at halftime, the defense and offensive lines of the Bengals are dominating this football game. They are imposing their will on a Buffalo team who's used to imposing their will on opponents. That's why I said this is going to be a challenge for the Bills to come back and win this game. They're going to need a tip of a ball. They're going to need something to go their way. That's a little out of the ordinary because right now Burrow has way too much time and they can run the ball as well. Screen pass to Chase. Get the ball in his hands and he makes something happen for 12 and a first down. Tracy, down to you. Jim, this Bills secondary has dealt with so many injuries this year, from Micah Hyde to DeMar Hamlin, Jordan Poyer playing with a knee injury, and now safety Dean Marlowe has been ruled out with a groin injury. Wow, so again, Marlowe, who had the interception last week and has been starting at the position that was manned for 14 of the games this year by DeMar Hamlin. And that, of course, was Micah Hyde's position at the start of the year before a neck injury for him. Now it's Jaquan Johnson in there. First and ten. And what a catch. That was some fingertip grab by Higgins. And right back comes Cincinnati, moving the football again. Yeah, this is a 50-50 ball with one hand. And like you said, Higgins calls them 80-20 balls. That's 50% at best to catch a ball like that. Higgins, a true number one, I believe, as well as Chase. It's just simple football. This is Peyton Manning football, okay? They line up, and they try and get to the right play. They're two by two, and he just reaches through and throws it to dirt. <laughs> well, he got hit low. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy, you're holding your breath if you're a Bengal fan right now. Shaq Lawson was the one who hit him, and Burrow trying to walk it off. Well, that's where the snow might help you a little bit if you actually slide out right there. He took a hit, yeah, but the feet weren't planted. Yeah, that still hurts, but no, it's yeah. not a penalty because Carmen pushes him into him, right? You can go, can't go low on quarterbacks unless the offense pushes you into him. So second and ten. And that's dropped. That was Trenton Irwin who had a catch in the first half. Well, here we go. This is going to be a big third down. That should have been an easy throw catch, and he would have gotten right up around the first down marker. But when I say this is a Peyton Manning-type offense, I truly mean that. They've got themselves into a two-by-two -two set a ton. They line up, put the running back behind you, and he gets to the right play. And you see two guys, one, two, and then two on the other side. That's two-by-two. Two. And then the quarterback... Burrow looks at the defense, sees what they're in, and he gets to the right play, and then they run these simple concepts. But what they've created here with Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan, they figured out Joe Burrow has some Peyton Manning tendencies. 
And so you don't need a ton of motion and a ton of things. They do it a little more than them. But the truth is, it's really hard to defend because he gets through progressions very fast and they get to the right play versus the right coverage over and over and over again. We saw the timeout called by Buffalo before this third and ten. The reimagined Pro Bowl games presented by Verizon are headed back to Vegas. You can see the Manning brothers lead as AFC and NFC head coaches in new skills challenges and the first ever AFC versus NFC flag football game tuned in Sunday, February 5th, 3 Eastern, ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and Disney XD. By the way, Peyton is here today, just taken in the game. Made a visit to the field during pregame warm-up, said hello to a few folks. Here's a third and ten. Had plenty of time, and Hurst leaps for the first down. Whew, what a play by Hayden Hurst. He went right over Jaquan Johnson, who had come in for Marlowe. This is just an incredible play. This is a great view right here. Burrow keeping his eyes downfield, and then Hurst showing off that athleticism for such a big guy, jumping over Johnson. They just have too much talent. I mean, it just looks easier for the Bengals. That was third and what, Jim? Third and ten. And again, and they just checked it down, and they had the time. They had time to throw. The they, line they held up. Time. And the thing that's crazy is the only reason they're that wide open is Burrow looking downfield creates more space for the receiver at right end. That's Mixon getting nine out of that. He rushed for 59 yards in the first half. These guys are imposing their will. I mean, it's just Cincinnati just moved Buffalo's defenders off the ball. Look at this whole side. They're supposed to be backups. Look at these holes and just everyone's five to eight yards downfield. It's not like there's a guy. I'm concerned if I'm a Bill fan right now, Jim. Second and two. Burrow tries to sneak from two yards out. And let's see where they mark it. We got we got two side linesmen who are, have got different views of it. But now they say they say first down. Okay, tell them to move the chains. That angle looked like well, Gene Steratore were pretty close, maybe a little short. Yeah, you know what, Jim? Uh, it looks to me like he is just a little bit short when he lands. It's where the nose of that football is, but it appears to me where it lands if that first down. Well, he's asking him to reset the shot clock. He's not going to, so they're going to go ahead and have to hey, listen. figure out the 18-17 and do this on third and short. Yeah, they, they did signal for a first down and they started to move the chains and then they came back, reevaluated on their own, and moved it back. It's what happened to Mike McDaniel last week. He heard that it was a first down and had to go back to the fourth and one late and they lost it on a delay game. Toss it outside the mix and he's got it now and he's inside the 10 and down to the five. That was some block by Jackson Carmen, the left tackle. Got to give him credit oh. for how he's done today. No question. And first starts with Chase, though, who sets the edge. Look at your best player. Chase just blocking. 13-yard run to the outside on third and inches. And now they got a first and goal. Chase sealed the edge. Carmen came outside. And this is just a physical Cincinnati ball club. Buffalo, I don't want to say they look tired, but it's just... They look like they're not quite as big as Cincinnati right now. It's Burroughs pass, and he had pressure to unload it quickly. And we do have a marker out. Pass interference, number 27, defense. The foul occurred at the one-yard line. That's where the ball will be placed, first down. And Irwin's going against White, and... I think he grabs him a little bit. You see at the bottom of your screen right there. Yeah, it's subtle, but you can't you can't hold both arms around him right there. Yeah, that's going to get called every yeah. time. So, Irwin step away and right there. 
This Buffalo number two defense, Jim, they need to hold up. This doesn't look good. First and goal, Mixon, the running back. He's had only one rush touchdown since week nine. Here he gets the handle. Mixon met and still driving. Look at that effort. Well, he never got the ball across, got the feet into the end zone, but that won't get you six. And they are able to stop him on this play, setting up second about a half yard away. That was one of the best jobs by Buffalo, pushing that line of scrimmage. But just the finish right now by Mixon allows them to get back in advantageous situation. You know, the D linemen usually have a tougher time, and Leslie Frazier knows this. When it's slippery out there, it's hard for D linemen to get off. And I thought that challenged Buffalo early in the game. When you see him checking the play right here, here will be a timeout. Or 12 men on the field. It looks like there's a lot of guys for Buffalo. Gene, what happened there? Well, you've got the defense lined up, in, and, and the ball is imminent. The snap is imminent. When that happens, it's a dead ball foul against the defense. Yardage-wise, it's about a four-inch penalty, though, Jim. That's exactly what I was going to say. If you're ever going to do it, it's right there. But it's an extra down. Back to first goal. You got a Bills player across. It was Phillips. Encroachment, number 97, defense, half the distance of the goal, second down. They say first down there. I think they got that. I think they got that wrong. It's second down. Okay. I saw the same thing you did. I'm like, why are they giving them a first down? But so right. I mean, you got inches, right? Just quarterback sneak it. I mean, but just don't put the ball over across yeah. unless it's a fourth down play. You don't do it on first, second, and third. And Baltimore was a division opponent. They make it hard. Division opponents are always difficult. That's why that game was very difficult for Cincinnati last week. Second and goal. They know your tendencies and everything. Unbalanced line. He's doing a bunch. Going to give it up. Hand it off. Mixon. Oh. Still waiting for a signal. No arms are raised. This is all Mike Milano. The first team all pros played amazing this year. Sorry, Matt Milano. Mixon thinks he's got a touchdown. Look at him over there. And then at the very end of it, you'll see Lawson come flying in. But Milano comes right there, and then there. Oh, that looks really close. That looks like a touchdown to me. Here, this is the view right there. They challenged it, and it's a challenge. I think they're going to win here, Gene. Yeah, you know, I feel like it too. It looks like Mixon's knees actually were at the goal line, Jim. But remember now, they Cincinnati marked this short. Challenging the ruling on the field that the runner is short of the goal line. You don't see the ball, we'll Jim. Exactly. That's exactly where I was going to go before Carl Schuffer started to announce there, Tony. You've got to see the football. Just because the knees cross, it's like you better see his fully. That's going to be close. Right, he's think. facing forward. It looks like the ball would have crossed the plane. We'll see. Step aside. Phone with NFL Plus. They have overturned the ruling on the field. It is a touchdown. Mixon broke the plane. And I think it's the correct call because right here, this is the view. You see that knee down right there. And that's like, okay, that's still not enough. But then you can see on this one, the ball, if the knee's there, you see his upper body there, and then it gets pulled back. That is a touchdown, and Cincinnati is up 14, possibly going to the fourth in Buffalo. That was a six-minute and 25-second drive. McPherson, the extra point, good. I mean, back on week nine, Mixon had five touchdowns in the game against Carolina. Missed a couple of games shortly thereafter with a concussion, but he had not found the end zone but once since that prolific day at Carolina. There was also, by the way, Gene, on that touchdown, did they get the playoff in time? There was no flag for this. Look at the play clock here. You know, Jim, you're right. And this is that sequence we've talked about before where when the back judge is watching the play clock, when it reaches zero, his eyes go from the play clock right down. And if the snap happens right at that point, then they pass on it. Even though we see zeros on the ball not moving, that's the mechanic that the officials use. That's really well said, Gene, because the truth is you can't be looking at two things at once. So when he's looking at it, it goes like your eyes have to go back and forth. It's not like baseball where 
he's feeling the catch and the first baseman. Yes. You know, the, He's got to go foot. through that progression, right? Yeah. And that's what it is. So and you're you've got to see zeros first. Half a tenth of a yeah. second. Yeah. You don't look and see one and then look back down. You wait for yeah. the zero. That was a definition of a methodical drive. That's a compliment. They had seven first downs, taking it down the field. Well, and Cincinnati was the worst rushing team there for four or five weeks, Jim. And you see, this is where I said whoever can run the ball better. And they've got 126 today on the ground as Hines hops along just past the 30. We got a flag on the return. Well, to, to my point though, like, why do you run the ball all of a sudden more? Because you have injuries on the Here's offensive the line. Holding number 85, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Coming up on CBS Sports beginning Friday at 5 Eastern, the PGA Tour is in Torrey Pines for the Farmers Insurance Open. And then on Saturday, the day begins with College Hoops, doubleheader, followed by, again, live tour coverage, live final round Saturday at 4.30 Eastern time into the evening. That's coming up Friday and Saturday here on CBS. Names like Justin Thomas, Morikawa, Rahm, they'll all be there. Strong field in our season premiere of the PGA Tour next Friday and Saturday on CBS. By the way, I believe to shut the run down means you shut it down early. Teams have a harder time, A, sticking with it or creating balance if you shut it down early. Today, Buffalo did not do that on that first drive to open the game. There's an incompletion to Diggs. And to me, Cincinnati's ability to run that early allowed them to kind of stick with it a little more, right? And Mixon gets 14 attempts for 80 yards. P. Ryan two, Chase, and this ball was barely overthrown. And Josh is like, can I take that a little higher angle? A little higher angle. Bills Actually. have been held to 200 yards of offense as we have a minute to go in the third quarter. Josh Allen undefeated at home in the playoffs, Jim. But he doesn't get behind by 14 very often. I can tell you that. This is a tall task. Time he had time. Look at McKenzie able to get away from Wilson, who was a teammate at Wyoming of Josh's. And that's a gain of nine, maybe, maybe eight. I mean, Wilson's one of the more underrated linebackers. He's the governor of Wyoming, Josh Allen calls him the gov, governor. Yeah. Even has it inputted into his phone. His caller ID is LJ Wilson, the governor. <laughs> so, great respect for his old cowboy teammate at Wyoming. But it's a third and two. Well, he just guarded a wide receiver really well at the end. McKenzie gets away, but he's been outstanding all year. He's gonna have to do it again. He's been a spy on Allen a bunch. Decides to go long. That ball knocked out of the hands of Gabe Davis. That was some play by Cam Taylor Britt. Yeah, the second round pick. This year, this is possibly a game-saving play. That is a little bit of a drop, though. That ball is perfectly thrown. Gabe Davis doesn't normally. Oh, might have tipped his finger for a second, but good form at the end by Taylor Britt. That's a monster play. So very quick work. And that means they have to punt again just after the Bengals completed that long drive for a touchdown. About to get the ball back in the closing seconds of quarter three. Martin's punt disappears into the snow and now returns earthbound at about the 40. I've seen enough games to see. When we were talking at halftime when the offense and defensive line dominates in a very similar like skill level game with teams with great receivers, great quarterback play. It's really hard to come back and Buffalo tried with that long drive to open the third and get three points, but Someone on Buffalo's defense is gonna have to make a play for Buffalo to win. It's gonna have to be something that's overthrown a tip ball And that's really the only way I see Buffalo coming back to win this because Cincinnati is dominating up front Burrow again will take it the short route to Mixon who high steps it to the 50 to close out the quarter. 
Well, Bills put up a field goal to start the quarter, but then Cincinnati came back with a touchdown drive. Up 14, heading to the fourth. You're watching the divisional playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax on CBS. Highmark Stadium here in Orchard Park. And the Bengals, right at the get go, quieted things before this Bills Mafia and drove it right down the field. And they've scored a touchdown on a touchdown throw from Burrow to Chase. They've had the upper hand throughout. But they've looked so in sync, and people are questioning with the offensive line. You no know, injuries, but nope. This is them imposing their will and running the ball and doing everything. That was Mixon for nine, and he's moving on on 89 yards on 15 carries. You One touchdown. Di you didn't expect, you know, look at that. They seal the backside, so it's a one-on-one -on -one block, and right there you see Denigy wins that one as well, and this is the part where Buffalo earlier this year was so dominant. Von Miller, when he was there, that was the thing. If they thought if he was here today, that would have been a game changer, and it would have been because they've had so much time but running the ball. But they were ranked fourth in the NFL in pressure rate when he was there, and he left 27th, Jim. That's how important he was. That was the game changer for Buffalo this year. Second and one. Nixon's got another first. They're now up to 27 first downs in this game. You know how you can do that? Just dominating the offensive line. Yeah. And you did not with the see offensive line. that coming in. No, they, everybody thought that was going to be the weakness and maybe the difference in the game, and it's been a strength for Cincinnati. We're going to talk about all these statistics that are very positive for Burrow and Mixon and Hurst and Chase. The guys that don't get the stats, though, have been probably the biggest story. And that's who, honestly, that was the worrisome approach. But when you look at them, their size is big. Just look at them sitting right here. When you see these guys move against them, they're bigger. That's to Chase. And Jamar breaks a tackle and gets near another first down. And when you have that ability to get that in the running game, you can just create little plays. You can just call little four-yard plays, two-yard plays. And if, you know, if he gets tackled there, it's only three or four. And if Chase is Chase, then all of a sudden Chase is on the case and you get ten. And, and I, all of a sudden it's good. I remember when you said that against <laughs> Kansas City last year at the end of the regular season. Of course, they go on and win this. They've had Kansas City's number the last three times, including at KC last year in the AFC Championship game. Three straight wins. It's so rare. Cincinnati is more than for real. Oh, oh that ball hit the hands of Boogie Basham and sets up third and two. And that's where we talked about the only way to get back in this game is for a Boogie Basham or somebody on this defense to make a play that could turn this around and, you know, hits you in the face mask. Sometimes it's hard to catch it after it hits you in the face mask. Usually try and touch it before it hits the face mask. Well, look at Basham now trying to get a stance area all cleared out for a third and two. You know you're going to get man to man down there. You're going to see some crossers inside. <laughs> Here's the pass for Higgins and it's incomplete. Oh and the flags out. Gosh, I can hear that hit up here. Yeah. Oh. Boy. That was as wicked a sound as I've heard. That was Tredavious White and Jordan Poyer colliding. I mean, I could Pass hear that up here. Number 27, defense, automatic, first down. This had to be helmet to helmet right here with each other. Oh, wow. We'll stop I Direct TV, get your TV together. And buy Domino's, get great deals on pizza, bread twists, chicken, desserts, and more. It's a 26-yard pass interference penalty, Gene, and it's a big call on a third and two. It is, Jim, and, and look, it's not a huge, uh, you know, contactable play, but if you see the right arm restricting there, and then the hold again a little bit, it's taking that half a step or step away, which which really is big when you're, leap, you know, laying out for a football. And both Poyer and White were able to get up and walk to the sideline, but it's getting very thin in that secondary. Cam Lewis has come in. Jaquan Johnson's already uh, had to be brought in for 
emergency duty. And both of the uh, DBs are in the blue tent, and you got a first and goal from the four. It had it been an incompletion, it would have been fourth and two from the 30, and you probably would have been looking at a Tyler, uh, Tyler Beth, an uh, Evan McPherson field goal attempt from about 48 yards in the snow. Yeah, that would have been difficult too. And Poyer was upset. We talked to Tracy Wilson, the sideline during that break, and she told us he didn't want to, but they're going to make him do that right there. So, like you said, you've got different guys now in that secondary. Burrow keeps it. He's got Russo on his back, and he'll pick up about a yard, if that. Looked like. Uh, I think Joe Mixon would have scored a touchdown easily <laughs> if he just handed it to him. You know, the quarterback gets to keep it sometimes, and sometimes he hands it off. And... Looked like out of the Josh Allen playbook. Well, these two guys, second and third in the league in passing and rushing touchdowns, you said they were tied at 35 apiece, but 42 for Allen and 40 total touchdowns passing and rushing now. Second and, and off the hands of Hurst. At the goal line. That might be the first real, like, throw that he just missed, right? He hasn't he's, missed many. No, I mean, that's the only throw that I feel like he just missed. And we're talking about the snow and everything else. Burrow doesn't normally miss when someone's open. Sean McDermott applauds, but his team has to stop him here. Third and goal. 12 minutes to go. There's Mixon. Cam Lewis able to make contact with him at the two. You have to kick a field goal here if you're Cincinnati. But if I'm Buffalo, I'm like, it's not the worst thing to let them get down to almost the one, so they might go for it. Because <laughs> they're not going for it from the four. Because but the, the, the field goal yeah, is very hurtful to the Bills' chances with... 11.45 to go in the clock running. Three-score game if he makes it. Got to do it. Three-score game. Yep. They say that's better than a two-score game yeah. if you're Last leading. time I checked. Nothing is, you know, 100% here. I mean, that field, it's slippery. Things it's going to happen, but you trust this. It's pretty close right here. It's from 20. That's all it is. And that kick is good. Drove it right home. 27 to 10 Cincinnati we have a flag I mean people may have thought Cincinnati could beat the Bills people may have thought they might even win by a touchdown but I don't think anyone thought it'd be a 17 point game with a quarter almost still left and I'm pretty sure they lined Defense up off sides. number four was lined up in the neutral zone that penalty's declined the result of the play is a successful field goal the Bengals have scored on five of their seven possessions. You're watching the Divisional Playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax on CBS. They're already gone up the ramp as well. And now about to kick off to Hines. We bring in Jay Feely, special teams expert. What do you see coming up here? Well, Buffalo. the Bills need something. I'd run a bounce return. The footing's not good. So get them going one way and try and bounce it back where they have to adjust on the fly. You might be able to find something with Hines. So when I hear bounce return, I hear throw the ball to the other side of the field and do something cool. Give us something. I was so excited to see a return. I know. I want to see a bounce return too, Jay. It's a bounce touchback through the back of the end zone. Coming up, the State Farm Post Game Show, JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower. Our crew back in the studio, the best. They have all the latest NFL news and their analysis of this game. It's coming up on the State Farm Post Game Show. Well, if you ever needed Josh Allen to be at his best, he's not been bad. Remember, everyone, if he doesn't turn the ball over, they went. No, he hasn't turned the ball over. There's been no turnovers in this game. And all of a sudden, Buffalo's down 17. He's got to turn into Superman. Well, he looks for another option. And there's a start. Is this a catch made down the field by Dawson Knox near the 40-yard line of Cincinnati? Josh Allen didn't just all of a sudden become one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Accidentally, he has this ability. That's a big time throw. And that was a big time job looking off the free safety there, but he's got to keep doing it, and everything has to happen fast. This is two minutes the rest of the day. That was 32 yards. Longest play of the game for Buffalo. And now he just launches it out of bounds.
So Tracy just passing along that White and Poyer both in the locker room being evaluated for head injuries. But you're right, Tony. It's got to be hurry up the rest of the way. You've got this this season of so many different layers to it, and adversities, and there have been so many different things that have challenged this team. And now trying to find a way to save their season with 10.47 to go. It's going to be hard because that defensive coordinator has done an outstanding job with pressures. Gets it away. And that catch right at the sticks. That is Beasley, who now has three catches in the game. And that's a first down. Well, these are the pressures that keep coming after you. Take a look on this side of your screen on the left. Right there, Hendrickson comes free. It's because the pressures, everyone's in there, and someone's coming like, hey, there's four guys. Who else is going to come? They've done it three times in a row. Here comes another one. The ball's out. Was that ruled an incompletion? There's the scoop and a recovery. Hendrickson has the recovery. And that's Mike Hilton, one of the best in the league at disguising and hiding, and he catches Josh Allen. He took a serious hit on this one. This is... I and mean, the, he got it on both sides. We'll see if this is a fumble or not, Jim. But right here, 21, Mike Hilton comes flying in, and, oh, you see Allen takes that hit from the front and back. Boy, Mike Hilton makes big plays, doesn't he? Yeah, he and does. they've ruled it. They've ruled it on the field. Oh. A fumble. Gene? Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Gene, really, really tight, guys. And really, remember now, all you need is one camera frame with the ball in control and moving forward. Ooh, that look, looks like it might have been moving forward, but it also looks like a fumble. I don't know. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon, the network you deserve, the savings that last. State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Indeed, we help people get jobs. There's a whole lot to sort out here. They've ruled it an incomplete pass during the break. Allen actually went into the blue tent for about two minutes, and now he jumps back on yeah. to the field and is able to resume play. And that's why, Gene, you know that he wouldn't have been able to if it would have been from injury, but that's why he was asking to come back on the field if he was allowed. Second and ten it is. And he wanted to launch it long a couple of times. Now he's going to use his legs and slide down to about the 26. And again, there's Wilson, his old uh, teammate. McDermott wanted a late hit on that. But Gene, just to clean it up, they did rule that an incomplete pass before. Yeah, Jim, you know what? It was really close, but he just was having that arm moving forward. And here on the slide, look, to me, the defensive players have both committed before Josh Allen uh, started his slide. So even though it feels a little late, I think it's a good no call for a late hit. We just saw the replay on the arm just moving forward there for an incomplete pass. Bill, it's third and four, Tony, from the 26. Well, you got to be able to use his legs. Look, at, you got to take your shots to the outside right here and then use your legs. Pass to Knox on the ground for the first down. Got hit again this, by Hilton. This is one of the greatest pressure packages I've seen in quite some time. You're going to see pretend pressure, but it's actually going to come from over here. And this has gotten Allen over and over, but this will get a lot of people. They need slants. They need quick stuff, screens. Mike Hilton describing these blitzes, but right now Josh Allen is taking a beating, and they're coming from everywhere, and it's disguised. Lou Anarumo, unbelievable job today. He can adjust with the best of anyone. Allen checks down and Singletary loses a yard. Guess what? It's Hilton again. We'll talk about an underrated nickel cornerback. Mike Hilton, that's Lou and Arumo, who right there has had one of the great runs. I'm telling you, since last year, what he did to Patrick Mahomes in that championship game to now has been truly remarkable. Tigers don't change their stripes very often. This team has developed. The ability to keep it simple and be very exotic for the opposing, opposing team. Second and ten again. It is deflected and tipped at the line of scrimmage. That was Hill. Hill's had quite a game too, by the way. 
Yeah, he's gotten in the backfield. He's batted down a few balls. And that's what D linemen are taught to do, right? When you don't rush and get close, you just wait for him to throw and then hit the ball. That's three batted balls. Yeah, that's too many. Third and ten. Remember, field goal is in play because they're three scores down. Third and ten. And here comes the flag for pre-snap penalty on Buffalo. Ball starts. Number 79, offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Trying to get five yards back, go through multiple cadences. Why did it waste a hot, hot, hot? Why did it waste a hot, hot, hot? What? Oh, it's a false start. You made me jump. <laughs> <laughs> I do think right now the biggest difference is you've got to get the ball out of his hands quickly and make it simple. You can't diagnose everything. See, who are the D linemen? Who aren't? And who's coming? There you go. That's what you need to do. That's how you can win this. Singletary to the 15. Now you got a decision to make. It's fourth down and about five or six. And again, you're three scores down. They're keeping the offense out there. I, yeah, I'm going for this right now. I mean, I know it seems like, well, you get within two scores, but it's hard to move up and down the field over and over again. So once you're down here, you got to go on this. And... Well, they got nine on that last one. Give them a fighting chance. Need six. This is fool's gold. Digs over here. He's going to get double teamed. Go inside. Up here. One of those two. Allen still looking for answers. Now throws toward the end zone. And it's incomplete. It was intended for Davis. Eli Apple said, no, no. Not on me this time. And they turn it over on downs. What a job defensively today by this Bengals team. That's a postseason record for Cincinnati. 28 first downs. They've been mounting those numbers at such a rate since the very start. That's well, the combination of the offensive line imposing its will. Play calling by Callahan. By the way, White in on that tackle. He came back from the locker room and got right back into the lineup. The divisional playoffs conclude tonight. The Cowboys and 49ers on Fox at 6.30 Eastern. And next Sunday, don't miss the NFC Championship game on Fox at 3 Eastern, followed by the AFC Championship game on CBS at 6.30. All games presented by Intuit TurboTax. Timeout called by Buffalo. That was some impressive performance last night by Philadelphia to advance to the championship and be the host next week against the winner of Dallas and San Francisco. What are your thoughts on that game coming I up? I think that was very similar to this one, right? It's almost like Dallas, everyone left right now going into today, I think were the best teams in the NFL for the last month or two. So you could argue earlier in the year, whatever you want, but truly you have Buffalo, Cincinnati, and Kansas City coming into today. You had... Dallas, San Francisco, and Philadelphia coming into today. Those are the six best teams. I think Dallas can win this game, and I think they can win the Super Bowl. I also think San Francisco is as tough to play as anywhere else in the National Football League on the road in the playoffs as you see once again just the effort Cincinnati's doing. That is going to be an incredible game, and Philadelphia was the team I told you a long time ago has a scheme that's almost impossible to stop offensively. Everyone's amazing. <laughs> Timeout called by Buffalo. What an effort by P. Ryan to pick up another Cincinnati first. $1 delivery fee on our app. Well, the Bills have used all of their timeouts. Seven minutes to go, and Cincinnati has picked up two more first downs after forcing the Bills off the field. This is one of the few running plays that hasn't gone very far. They've got 153, make that 154 rush yards in this game. A little frustration here. You know, Diggs wants to win. You know, he's a highly emotional player. They love each other, but right there he's like, listen, I was open right over there on the side. Every receiver's open. You saw it. Did you think he was open? He eventually came open, but it's almost like once you move on through, you know, you're trying to create a play. By that point, you know, someone's going to come open eventually, and sometimes you miss a guy, but he wasn't wide open early. The safety was there helping out. 
He did become open, but by that point, Josh's eyes had looked to somebody else already, so that happens a lot. Look at Mixon break through. It stopped about two yards short. And again, Buffalo can't stop it. For Cincinnati to, and like, you know, we keep talking about to control the line of scrimmage the way they had. That was the one area that I always felt like Buffalo had over them, or maybe Kansas City in some ways. Not anymore. Today has convinced me right now Cincinnati is a juggernaut. They have created a system on defense that is so hard to go against. And what the coach, Zach Taylor, you just saw right there, has created an offense. Him and Callahan is so hard to stop. It's simple, yet extremely difficult because they get to whatever you're doing, Jim. So they line up and they go, oh, you're going to be in cover four today? Well, we've got our 20 cover four beaters. You're going to play cover three more often? We've got our 20 cover three. Other teams are calling plays and then reading stuff. They're figuring out what you're doing, and then they're going to live in this world on how they call it, so all their players are going to be pretty simple. You want to be in an over front, an under front, a bare front. These are all different fronts. We're going to run the ball with all of our over front stuff. It seems simple, but they do a good job of getting to it at the line of scrimmage. And that's what Peyton Manning did, and Joe Burrow is starting to live in that world. That was Mixon, a great effort on the previous play for their 30th first down of the game, which is pretty remarkable. And now it's P. Ryan for three more. And it's just to think now that Zach Taylor is on his way to his sixth total postseason. He's, he's, he's on, on his way to attempting a sixth postseason win. And this will be five for him. Five. And he had six total wins his first two years. So to be in the FC Championship game, barring any miracle here, and he'd have a chance next week to equal what he did for two years. And hey, Mike Brown, they stayed with him. They believed in what he was building. 100%. And by the way, if they beat Kansas City next week, Cincinnati should be the favorite. Kansas City's been the favorite for so long now after New England, right? Five years in a row, AFC Championship mm -hmm. game. But if Cincinnati beats them again on the road, you've got to say Cincinnati is the team in the AFC going into the next year three, regardless how the Super Bowl goes. But that's, that's right. a tall task because Patrick Mahomes has a way of just showing up, right? He's going to be there in that stadium next week. Will he be playing? <laughs> there, there you see the turnaround, the road record, how that turned around. I mean, it's just... It's been remarkable. Well, the one common theme there is Joe Burrow. <laughs> he helps turn around sometimes. Yeah. But uh, now you're you're dead right. What he's done is amazing. And that steady hand, you have to have a quarterback. But from there, that quarterback doesn't guarantee you a win in this game, does it? That stops short, by the way, to be fourth down. Well, that, by the way, doesn't guarantee you you know, having a quarterback a win in the big games. Then it takes everybody. Zach Taylor hired good coaches. They got good teams. By the way, the ability to have the depth on the offensive line, they went and made a concerted effort like Kansas City did a couple of years back when they lost in the Super Bowl to Tampa. And they're going to go for this right here. Yeah, they're going to go for it and just try to finish it off. Oh, just there, no you, timeouts on the other side. You should try and draw them off sides first. And then if you go for it. It looks like Cincinnati may have moved. Let's see. Ball start, number 67, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. That'll bring out the punting unit. They should not have gone for that, though, either. That's brought about the only way that they, Buffalo could have came back, in my opinion, because you're going to have to have a short field once, right? You're not going to go, you know, three drives of 80 yards and 239 with no timeouts. By the way, how big is this going to be next week? Oh. Cincinnati overcoming the neutral site. They felt slighted. No, that definitely they felt slighted. motivated them. Maybe deservedly so. We don't know. But I'll tell you right now, if I was a Bengal fan, I would have been a little bit like, well, why aren't we getting a neutral site with Buffalo if Buffalo's getting it with that? And <laughs> this is a football game. Cincinnati takes on their approach to their head coach, and they just keep fighting. And we're going to go play in a parking lot if we have to, yeah. I guess. And they came in here and did this. Josh Allen undefeated at home in the playoffs, not today. Trust me, the players were very aware of the 
feeling of being slighted. Even though Zach Taylor really wouldn't feed into it a whole bunch, didn't really address the team about it. State Farm postgame show is coming up as soon as this one ends. JB, Phil, Nate Boomer, Coach Carr, I'm sure they'll have a lot of good takes on this game on the State Farm postgame show. But the players were. The players were not happy with the way it all got reworked and reconfigured with the game's cancellation. Even down to the fact that tickets were being sold, which you had to do anyway, but they maybe didn't understand that. But the fa that just made them feel like everybody looked at it like it was a foregone conclusion. I agree. And they didn't come in here with a chip. They came in here with a boulder. Yeah, it did. Especially, they're like, didn't we go to the Super Bowl last year? Exactly. As Singletary steps out, 226. They're like, I think that we went to the Super Bowl last year, right? We're the Bengals. We went there. Why is everyone coordinating Buffalo and Kansas City? Well, there's a little bit of history before then. But what Cincinnati has done right now, today was that day. I told Coach Taylor at the end, I said, if you guys win this one tomorrow, I honestly think this is as big a game as far as just changing perception in general. Like there's no flukiness, no anything. You're for real going for the next three years. They can beat anybody any day. They're not the underdogs anymore. There's a completion to Knox. He tries to break every tackle. He can't get it to about the 31. I think you're on a point there that even when we had back in early December KC at Cincinnati, it was one of those games some wanted to say, well, I'm still, I know they're really good. I know what they did last year to KC. I know they went to the Super Bowl. I got to see it again. It's almost always been that. I still got to see it exactly. one more time. I don't think you have to see it any more for you to realize well said. this team is dangerous as Singletary is able to get to his feet. I believe he might have been touched. I think you're exactly right the way you said that. There was like... Yeah, they're good, but did they get lucky with that play? Did Burrow, he created, there was just something no. that went their way. No, they're actually this good. They're very good. They're here to stay, Jim. Yep, and they're on their way to a huge triumph in Buffalo with two minutes to go. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by H&R Block. It's tax season. And by Bud Light, who reminds you to drink responsibly. Two minutes to go. Cincinnati shellacking of Buffalo here. What a performance by both sides of the ball. A lot of stars to single out. As Allen with no timeouts to work with. That's knocked out of the hands of Knox. You said a minute ago you think that well, you said Patrick Mahomes will be in the building, and I was saying, but will he be there playing? Because you've dealt with a high ankle sprain before. What does he face this week? <laughs> it's challenging because when I did it, I wasn't able to actually play the next week. Like, in other words, you can't walk. You can play the day of. So when it happened yesterday, I was like, he's going to play today. He's going to go ahead and, like, tape it up. They're going to go out there, and adrenaline's going to kick in, and he's going to be fine. But the next day... He's not going to be able to do anything. He's going to be almost be on crutches on Wednesday. And by, like, it depends, right, what grade and all these things. But for what it looked like, I would tell you, for those of you thinking it's 100% that he plays, it's going to take a lot. And now, will he play? I think yes. He's Patrick Mahomes. He's young. You have the ability to get, you know, healthier, faster. But at the same time, I just don't know for sure that he's going to be able to be Patrick Mahomes. I can tell you right now he's not going to have the same athleticism he had throughout most of the year. So you know that going in. What he did last night was remarkable. Remarkable. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 Minutes Presents and the stories of real-life heroes, followed by ghosts, and a special presentation of Top Gun tonight on CBS. Next time I ask you the question on camera. I won't do it right when you're inserting a piece of gum in your mouth, okay? So, sorry about that. <laughs> I had a gum, and I was literally choking on it while you were asking I me. It. I, was I was like, I can't believe I didn't throw my gum away. <laughs> I was like, and he's going to have I, a hard time, I, especially because I am as well right now, Jim, but thanks for throwing that one to me. Yeah. Uh, the handoff was a little early. It was, and I was like, oh, I can't believe I, I'm still chewing. <laughs> but I do think it's a challenge for Mahomes to get ready for next weekend. I'm being honest. Yes, it's going to be a huge challenge. And if he is back, I think that he's not going to be near as athletic. However, Mahomes on athletic is the best pocket passer in the NFL probably. <laughs> it's him and Burrow then. There's an interception. The first 
of the game for Cincinnati and this has been a great performance by the rookie I mean Taylor Britt's done it all and now he gets to say he has a postseason pick and it's no angel time for Cincinnati and they can showboat and showcase they've come in here and shown everybody just what they're made out of for all you owners out there this defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo this offensive coordinator what they've done they've changed they've adjusted throughout the year over and over again Callahan and Arumo, they need to be on your list and right there you see I also think Leslie Frazier to be a top five offense over and over again every year he's changed his stripes runs McDermott they have a mishmash Josh Allen that season ends abruptly and Burrow season continues and he keeps slaying the Dragons over and over again like last year. No question. He finds a way and he does it often with a lot of style. You know this though, not everyone puts him in the Mahomes Allen like physical talent level. He knows that, but he gets it done because he has these rare gifts that are almost not seen. You can't even evaluate him. So we got a rematch of last year's title game. It's the first AFC championship repeat matchup since the Ravens and Pats. The Ravens Patriots 2011 and 2012. And uh, we've been there to see all those three wins by Cincinnati in a one year span. Look at the back flip in, in the end zone. Oh, that was pretty clever. Yeah, that's always okay as long as you're not getting 70 snaps next week. Otherwise, don't do it. I do think though, Joe Burrow has put himself right there. You cannot say he's not in the class anymore. He is right there with anybody. We'll see what happens with Brady. But right now, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow have been the class for a while in the AFC. They're still there. It's going to take a lot to catch up with them. You saw Allen go over to Wilson, his old comrade from Wyoming. Hey, I'm up there, bro. Hey, Rodney, I'm seeing that ball last year, man. He has that it factor, but you know what the it factor is to me, Jim? He sees things faster than other people. And there's the meeting of the quarterbacks. Josh Allen whispering something into his ear. We're in a golden age coming up here. Oh, I mean, just like I said, at the start, the Listen, last three standing. Lamar Jackson's going to come back. I promise you next oh, year. There are others. This plays out. Herbert's okay. going to be there. Yeah, Trevor Oof. Lawrence. I mean, you've got Hurts. Yeah, I'm talking AFC side, yeah, but yes, exactly, you want to expand yeah. it to the NFC. We're all set now to go to Kansas City next Sunday. The AFC Championship game between the Bengals and the Chiefs again. Let's go down to Tracy. Well, thanks a lot. Joe just came over and said the job is not done, but what a performance from start to finish. What can you say about your offense, your defense, that offensive line that everyone talked about coming in banged up? How did you get it done tonight? Man, complete game from everybody. Offense, defense, special teams, domination from start to finish. That's what we expected. Job's not finished. We got another big one next week on the road. Excited for it. We talked about it yesterday, just that chip on your shoulder. Everyone talking about a neutral AFC championship game, not even thinking about you guys. How much did that motivate you coming into this? You better send those refunds. <laughs> and then finally, you're off now. Another road trip, this time to Kansas City, a rematch of last year's AFC championship. Your early thoughts on that one? It's going to be a fun one. You know, the two of the top guys in the league, two of the top teams in the league. Great defenses, great overall teams, great coaches. Going to be a great atmosphere. Excited to play in it. We'll see you there. Good luck. Appreciate it. Joe Burrow oh. leads the way. The <laughs> Cincinnati team with 412 yards, 30 first downs, and never turned it over once. I like that kid. I've liked Allen. I'd like to hope this kid's right there. I tell you what, this is going to be fun for a while. Next week, Jim, yeah, do you want to go too. do that one? I, I might as well, right? I'll see you. I'll that show up. I'll show up for that. This is exciting. The final score is Cincinnati 27 and Buffalo 10. Coming up next, the State Farm Post Game Show for Tony, Tracy, Jay, and Gene. Jim Nance saying so long from Orchard Park. Thank you for watching the Divisional Playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax.